Hi, I'm Miriam Manzo. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about my best tricks for bringing luxury into your life every day. As you know, Miriam Manzo Interiors is a luxury design firm. We do plenty of large houses uh, that are full of luxury details. But luxury means different things to different people. For some, time is the ultimate luxury. For others, space. And space, obviously, in a room like this, makes a big difference in how you can live luxuriously. But that doesn't mean that in a smaller space you can't use some of the design details that I talk about. Luxury for me also means how can I make my life easier? So I need things around me that look good but function well. If you see a lot of our other videos, um, particularly some of the smaller houses, you can see that organization and storage are massive massive points for me. Um, where you can place a dresser to me is a place you can do a built-in and yes that does take a considerable budget but if you have one good piece versus three pieces that are not functioning well to me it is money well spent so today what we're going to look at we're going to go through my bathroom we're going to go through my kitchen and some other areas in your in our house and i'm going to show you ways that i bring luxury as well as function into my life in small manageable and most importantly affordable ways so come with me and let's take a walk Let's start at the sink area. So this is an easy place to bring in pretty and functionality at the same time. So you've heard me talk about my love of trays. So here we have one where I'm corralling a bunch of my items needed at the sink area. Now, there is such a thing as too many trays. So I caution you, you don't want to use multiple trays on the same surface. So in this scenario here, we've got a beautiful antique silver trays. This is something you've heard me talk about in the past, particularly at my designer's own cottage. I'll leave the link here to that video. So one of the easiest things to do is to replace your mouthwash bottle. This is something easily found um, on again Amazon as well as at many home decor stores. It's meant to put water in to place on your nightstand for overnight. I use it for my mouthwash. It comes complete with a little glass attached. The other thing that I like to do with mouthwash is to use decanters, crystal decanters. And that's easy enough to do by putting a little shot glass beside it so that you have a way to um, consume or use that liquid. Now, this is another antique silver piece and I keep my Q-tips in it. So again, I dispose of the boxes almost immediately when I come back from the grocery store and I find ways to put items so that they're convenient so that's one of the biggest reasons I do this. If I had to always go into a drawer and then into the box to get my Q-tip, that's utilizing one of our luxuries, which is time. This way, they are always here for me to use. And then we've got um, just store-bought glass and toothbrush holder. Again, I'll leave a link to some of my favorites. On the other side, you will never see a plastic hand wash bottle in any of my homes or projects. This is so inexpensive to do, is to just put it in these pretty decanters in order to um, dispense your hand lotion. And then another vintage find a crystal bowl with a uh, lid and in this particular one I've got my elastic bands um, for when I work out and I want to tie my hair back so we're gonna move to the tub area here now again space is one of our luxuries and obviously I have space and spades in this bathroom but you can take a lot of these um, ideas and translate them to a smaller space. So one of the most underutilized areas in most bathrooms is the area over a toilet. You'll see in many of our staging projects, we incorporate floating shelves over all of our toilets um, in order to bring in display as well as extra storage and functionality. Here I've got this beautiful built-in that's backed with a mirror and then has glass shelves. So let's take a look at what's behind me. 
So again, we have another silver plated tray. Now, if I pull up this particular jar, so again, another antique find with a sterling silver top. This is where I keep my lavender oil for my bath. So it comes in a pretty jar, but that's not enough for me. I like to utilize these particular uh, vanity pieces um, from, these are I believe from the late 1800s. And then I just keep a stopper nearby that I put in and I can place it into my tub. So you see here where we've got, these are some new ones that'll be up on our shop page again from the late 1800s. Um, and it's an easy way, instead of having a cluster of um, store-bought jars with your essential oils, is to place them in this. And one of the things you can even do if you have a labeler and you have several of these is you can put the label at the bottom so you know which essential oil. And then these are um, a flea market find again. A beautiful Swarovski crystal, cut crystal, they're incredible. I use them to house extra soap. So that's a big thing for me, is you'll never see again a drawer full of uh, soaps in my homes. Um, I immediately take all the wrapping off and then I store them in jars, again for ease of use as well as their beautiful display factor. Let's head to the other side and see what I've done with my antique bottles there. On this side, I've got some more cut crystal jars. These are my bubble baths. Again, so everything is kept near the tub and um, used for both display and function. Now, one of the biggest things I get asked is, you know, how do you know what's a good piece or what you're going to do with them? You have to think outside the box when doing uh, antique shopping or flea markets. So case in point, this piece here. Now this at one time probably had a spray nozzle and this would have probably been for perfume. I'm pretty sure. Not 100% positive. I use it for my diffusers. So again, even though the diffusers that you buy come in a pretty glass jar, to me this is so much prettier. And you can order diffusers online. Again, I'll leave a link for you um, so that you can create your own diffusers instead of using the jars they come with. I just think it's so much more luxurious and pretty. And then here I have a TV and then again some vintage as well as store-bought finds. Let's see what I've got on my vanity next. Obviously my biggest luxury on this side of the bathroom is this spectacular custom vanity table with a Calcutta marble top that I had created. But beyond that, again in staging, we like to do a console table in many of our homeowners uh, bedrooms so that the makeup can be done separately from the main sink, allowing for other people to use the sink. So here there's a couple of things that I want to point out. One of them is my lamps. Now this is hardwired. So what that means is you'll notice that there's no plug showing. Let me move that over. So the reason for this is when we built the house, I had the plugs connected to a switch and then I purposely bought a lamp where the wire comes from the bottom. So there's the wire there, not sure if you can get a close up, and there's a little hole in the marble, and my wire goes down behind the drawers, connects to the plug, hardwired, again, it's not plugged in, and then that goes back to the switch. So in the morning, I'm simply flipping a switch and both lights are turning on. So for me, that luxury is twofold. The fact that I can turn both lights on at once, but also the fact that there are no wires exposed. So again, another very large uh, antique silver tray. We will be dropping a collection of antique silver trays in the next couple of weeks. So keep your eye on my curated interior.com for that in our vintage section. And then here, so these again are antique vanity jars is what they were called. This particular one has silver and some uh, mother of pearl as well as uh, onyx on it. So again, bobby pins in this one. You can see I utilize them, they're all over. This one is a collection of extra buttons. Um, this one here has little uh, clips for my hair again. So you can see where I really utilize these cotton balls and I've got more q-tips here so that I'm not having to get up and go to the other side of the room. And then here's another one here. 
that has my brushes in it. So these are things that can be found very inexpensively at garage sales, flea markets, eBay, um, and as I said, we'll be adding to our vintage collection in the next few weeks. And then here's one I especially like. So this was a talcum powder jar, again, antique, and I use it for my loose powder. So everything has a place, functionality is here, but it looks pretty. Let's head over to my lingerie cabinet. So sometimes having things luxurious is about the beauty and the function. Sometimes it's really just about the beauty, which is the case here. So these bl uh, glass boxes, I love them. A lot of people say they don't know what to do with. Here, I, I've actually got them in several places in the house. Here I have them, I collect Chanel kind of love it. Um, so these are the magnolias that come when you buy a Chanel scarf or a belt or even a, I think some of the cosmetics that they, they give this to on the Chanel bag. So I have a collection here um, and it just makes me happy um, to see them in the mornings. And then you'll see I never have a box of Kleenex in my house. I'm going to leave a link below to some of my favorites. These are so inexpensive um, to buy uh, and really elevate a space rather than having a Kleenex box. This particular one is square. You can also get them in the rectangular form. And then again, you see my Chanel, how much I love it. So this is something I've talked about in our um, one of our luxury condo projects that I did as a trick to do inexpensive art. Um, if you can get a hold of shopping bags of luxury designer. I have them framed beautifully like this. Again, we have a collection. We will drop those for you um, in a few weeks. And then here you see my cotton swabs are in, again, apothecary jars. Inexpensive, so many uses for them. So here you see them with the cotton swabs. Up top, I'm not sure if you can see those yet. Um, these are what I call my memory jars. So I've got a collection of roses. These are dried roses. Um, I have them in several spots of the house, occasions that where my children have had flowers. So their communion, their confirmation, their um, baptism, Mother's Day roses. I've dried them over the years. And then I have these collections of um, my dried petals. And then again, from the gifts, from their christenings and whatnot, I took the little flower petals with the candy and I've saved those as a memory of my children's uh, religious milestones. And beside that, finally, shells that my children and I, and I have collected on our um, trips down to Florida. So you can see here there's a combination of functional and just pretty. And then you can see I've got some beautiful white towels stacked. So when people ask me color for towels, my answer is always white. It's spa-like, it's clean, it's fresh. And any space benefits from a white towel. What I like to do is once a year, I weed through the ones that are looking a little bit tired and dingy and I replenish with new white towels. So a couple more tricks in here uh, for apothecary jars that I wanna show you. Let's take a look. Again, a luxury for my house is to have the space to have this beautiful center table. And you can see a collection of apothecary jars. Again, here's that soap that I talked about. So it's easy when I'm in the shower, if I run out of a bar, it's right here. And then I've got my bath salts. And in the shower, we've got another one used for body scrub. Rather than having the bag sit in the shower, um, I replenish that jar and it's always there when I'm ready to use. It. We're in the kitchen now and we're at the breakfast bar. Now again, I understand not everyone has the space to have a separate, separate coffee bar or breakfast bar, but if you can divide your kitchen into zones, it would make living your life that much easier. So by zones, I mean have an area where just the breakfast stuff is. That way the kids aren't all over the kitchen when getting their breakfast done. Same with your coffee and drink section. So here we're at my breakfast bar, which is basically dedicated to just that. So you can see cereals taken out of the packages and we're using these glass jars 
to store them. You don't have to worry about them going um, stale if you're using them quite a bit. So this is really the area where our favorite cereals are. And you can see here in the glass cabinet above the glass door cabinets, this is where the glasses and cups are kept. And usually there are bowls here as well. And then I'm lucky enough to have refrigerated drawers. So if I open this up, you can see uh, milk and syrups and whatnot are here. But then in my drawers on this side are all the dry ingredients that you need for making breakfast as well as vitamins and the um, blender for shakes and whatnot. So let's go into the kitchen proper now and I'll show you some of the things I utilize to make my life luxurious and beautiful. So here in the kitchen proper, you can see we have another glass front cabinet here. And this is the best excuse for all white dishes. It's not about the placement of them. It's really about what people see, which is dishes of one kind. So here we keep platters, bowls, um, and then all our serving pieces. So that for me is just luxurious to have that um, visual of all your dishes being the same and in one spot. Here we see another glass jar with cookies. Again, they will go stale eventually. What I like to do, quick tip here, is when the cookies are stale, we crush them and mix them with butter and we make a pie crust out of them. And then you can top that with either cream cheese or we like to do a ice cream pie um, on top of the cookie crust. And then this is a small beef of mine, um, paper towels. I hate the stands. I hate that little thing pointing up that lets you know that the paper towel is on a stand. It's a small thing. It's a pet peeve of mine. So I prefer they're useful. They need to be where you can get them. I like to buy these drink coasters. These are for wine bottles um, and they're a coaster for on your table. And I just sit my paper towel here within it. Now, for a lot of people, you might say, well, it's still a paper towel on your counter and it's true. But for me, this is less obtrusive and it makes me happy to see. So we're going to place that back here. And then you know, faux flowers. So uh, here we have a faux potted um, orchid. And then if I move over here, I have a mixture here of faux flowers and real flowers. So obviously having real flowers is out of the um, question for most people. It's something that we get just on special occasions. To invest in a good quality uh, faux floral and then you can mix it with your real. It just brings a pop of color um, and the idea that spring is around the corner but throughout the year I like to keep these full flowers around. Let me know in your comments if you'd like to see some of these brought to our shop page um, and I can uh, link some of my favorites for you there. And then the last item I want to show you here in the kitchen is again a necessary evil in a kitchen is the um, utensils needed by the stove for cooking. So again, I like to look for these vintage uh, champagne buckets um, and that's where I house a lot of my utensils both at my home, at my cottage, as well as um, for clients. We like to do these. Another good idea are um, Again, the vintage cookie jars. Take the lid off and use them as a uh, vessel for your utensils. Uh, again, um, the champagne buckets are great. Ice buckets, large ice buckets. Uh, at the cottage, we have a beautiful crystal one that we use. So try to think outside the box. Uh, for organization in the kitchen, there's so many videos uh, on YouTube that I encourage you to watch some of them on TikTok um, that give you organizational um, ideas for how to store things in your fridge, in your cupboards. I encourage you to watch these and to use some of these ideas. Having things be functional is a luxury for me because it gives you back the most important luxury, which is time. It saves time from having to go into the packaging or to another part of the kitchen or bathroom to utilize these items that are part of your everyday life. So think outside the box when looking for ways to display them and use them. I thank you for watching. Please leave in your comments questions. I'd actually like in a few weeks to do a question and answer um, video where I want to address some of the questions that you have just about design in general. And then don't forget 
to subscribe and like and hit that bell icon so that you're notified of our future videos. I'm going to be filming from um, High Point next week, which is the big furniture show for designers. So I hope to have an upcoming uh, video showing what's up and coming for 2023 in, and beyond in design. I'm Miriam Manzo. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.